everybody. Thank you for coming and thank you for joining us online. It's so good to have everyone today on this good and glorious day. I want to come to you with a Bible verse that I hope that I will share it the next two weeks also. And maybe you're wondering, what kind of Bible verse would that be, Pastor Ed? Well, it's from Isaiah 40, verse 31. But, that, but they that wait upon the Lord... Has anybody been waiting upon the Lord? Does anyone need their strength to be renewed? All right, well, I got good news for you. From Isaiah, the prophet says, They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run for touchdowns and for passes and for fumbles, and they shall not be weary. They shall walk. And not faint. So uh, that's our verse today. Um, and we hope to be uh, repeating that for the next two weeks. Uh, real quick, uh, we have some announcements. Um, we have family fun time today. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you a little teaser. Um, we're do in the middle of the clutter series. And we'll be wrapping that up um, probably next week. But we're going to go into our next series as we come upon Valentine's Day. Uh, but we're going to get an early story called um, Your Love Story with God. Okay, so yeah, it's, you know, you, you're in a love story with God. What's that about? So we're going to, but um, just get, to get started on that, a family fun time. Um, we're going to do some um, Your Love Story with God artwork. So if you want to do some of this fun artwork, you can do this. This is real simple, but it's real fun. And profound, so uh, that's what uh, we want you to do, or we have some other activities also, but that's what's going to be going on after church, so uh, please join us over in Weller Hall, where we'll have some good fellowship, some good lessons, and um, some good uh, games. Okay, so uh, real quick, our other announcements are, on Monday, um, the Bible study, uh, we wrapped up heaven, so now we know everything about heaven, so you just ask us and we can give you an answer. Um, and, um, but now we're starting up um, a new Bible study, and you want to come and check it out because we think you're really going to enjoy it. So I'm just going to leave that little dangler there, a little teaser, so that you come out on Monday at 11 o'clock and check it out. Um, I'd also like to invite you to come out on Wednesdays at 5.30. Um, we're having prayer in the chapel, and um, last week we had communion doing our prayer thing, and, and that was just wonderful. And so there's always something new and something different, and obviously prayer and scripture and songs. So if that's something um, that you want to experience, if, if you're looking for a great spiritual experience as we pray to our Lord, especially about what's happening over in Ukraine and other prayer concerns, we take prayer very seriously. Um, but um, if you just want to come and observe, um, we'd welcome you to come Wednesday at 530 at the prayer chapel on the other end of the building. Um, Saturday um, from 7 to 8 a.m., uh, the men's group are meeting. And um, so uh, we want to invite you to that. Um, just some good stuff going on there, too. Um, um, also, um, if I may, to backtrack a little bit, this Thursday and Friday, there's going to be the um, June Russell um, blood drive. Okay, that's from 2 to 7 p.m. You need to register online, but that's this Thursday and Friday. Um, are there any other announcements? Yes. Your financial statement and your financial statement is in your mailbox in the back if you haven't checked yet. Okay, and if you need a mailbox, come see us because we want you to have them. Okay, we're going to repeat that because we have, we have the mic. Um, your financial statements from 2022 are in the, your church mailbox. Um, so we'd uh, love to save a stamp or two um, if you can pick that up or if you want. I'd be happy to bring it out to you. So just give me a call and uh, you'll get a delivery from the pastor. Okay, um, uh, Dave? Yeah, um, it's, it's end of year time to financial statements also to get your books to the church for the annual audit. And I'm planning a finance committee meeting within the next week or so, depending on people's availability. Okay, thank you. So, uh, microphone working very well. Thanks, Jack, for doing that. All right. So, again, uh, I think we're up to date. And as we always say, um, we come here to worship the Lord. Uh, we thank you that you're at home ready to worship the Lord. Uh, we even understand this is just kind of blow your mind. There's people who will watch this later. 
And God is not, God is the God of, uh, it is not bound by time and place. So God can, um, if you're joining us later for worship, then we are still worshiping God with you. Uh, it says in heaven, a minute is like an hour and a day, like a thousand years, all kinds of things. So God is not bound by time and place. So, so let's, uh, are you ready to worship the Lord today? All right, I'm feeling that. So we're going to build on that, but uh, we're going to start with that because God says, if you give me a mustard seed, what can he do with that? Yeah. So are, are you ready to have a mountain of worship? Yeah. All right, Mary Ann, they're ready. If you're able, would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? <clears throat> Jesus said, beware, guard against every kind of greed. <laughs> Should we try that again? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth. Amen, you got that. Join in our opening hymn, Blessed Assurance, number 369. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can be here with you and we can freely be in all of you and worship you. As we come together in this service of worship, may we sense your presence in a new way as we listen to your words and sing the hymns of old. We desire to connect with you so that we can come closer to you and recognize that you are with us, not only this day, but also to recognize that we can rely on you when we leave this place. Be our all in all, and help us to not count on what matters in this world,
but to always count on you. Like we said in our call to worship, may we always have a rich relationship with you. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated. And, uh, so glad that we got our little kids here today. Our kids are precious to us. Uh, we really love that you guys came out, and we love seeing you all. And again, you make our service better. That's why we want to give the message to you first, because we wanted you to know how important you are and glad that you came today. Well, um, and it, now you might not be glad you came, because I want to, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about, why do I have to clean my room? And even some of the parents are feeling a little uncomfortable, too, because some of us are guilty of that, too. And, and you're like, well, why do I have to clean my room? And we talked about before about, um, well, it, some of it has to do with, um, let's go back to the Bible. God, out of love, gave the Garden of Eden to Adam and said, Adam, this is all yours, but I want you to take responsibility for it I want you to take care of it. And if you take care of that, maybe I'll give you more. Because if I want, can, I want to try it to see if you're faithful in a little things and then to see if you're faithful in more bigger things then. I can't give you more things if you can't take care of the little things. And sometimes your parents might be thinking like, should I give them more things? They can't take care of the things they have now. So maybe your parents give you things because they love you, but we also need to take care of our things. Our parents, like God, is trying to teach us responsibility. And that's the ugliest word I heard today. Oh, responsibility. But it's an important word. And God wants us to be responsible and to take care of stuff. And the good news is, God wants to bless you with more stuff as we show we take care of the stuff we already have. Now, I want to get into another sensitive spot, and I'm with you here because I'm working on this too. Why do I have to make my bed? I thought I was being smart. I'm not making my bed because it's only going to get messed up again. I'm going to save time and be smart and not make my bed because it's only going to get messed up again, right? Yes! Because you know what? I heard from a Navy SEAL, and some people said he is the best Navy SEAL out of all the Navy SEALs, and the Navy SEALs are like incredibly the best soldiers there are. And he was speaking to young people like you. And he said, I want to tell you the most important thing you, the first important thing you can do in the morning is, and I'm thinking like, oh, here it is. What's going to be the most important first thing I should do in the morning? And he said, and this was to adults that were just graduating from college. Make your bed. I don't make my bed. Why should I make my bed? It's only going to get messy. He said, you should make your bed because it's your first accomplishment of the day. And it's important that you have an accomplishment because then you can feel good that you got something done even if it's a little thing because little things are important. And then once you got one little thing, maybe you can try another little thing like Brush your teeth. Oh, Pastor Ed. Make your bed. How long does it take to make your bed? Now, you're lucky you're not in the military. They would have to make your bed perfect and that you could flip a coin and it would bounce off the bed. Right, Earl? Yeah, still doing it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, making your bed's important um, for many reasons. Um, some people say it keeps your sheets cleaner. And other things too. But again, he was saying it's important to accomplish things. And that is something that you can accomplish. He says, what if you go out in the day in the world and you have a bad day? Bad days happen, right? Some things we can't control and some things we can control. We can't control how other people treat us. But we can control what we do. 
And he said, when you go home from a bad day, you know what you can see? Your bed's made. I did that. I accomplished something. How many of you has got pets? Did you take the responsibility? Again, your parents trying to take care of that pet. That pet's counting on you, isn't it? And you can see their pet's happy to see you, isn't he? Saying, thanks for feeding me. Thanks for taking me out. Those are little things, but we're building bigger things. And you can feel good that when you see your pet, that you took care of your pet. And you're going to see your bed and your bed's made. And so you can say, I can't control everything, but there are some things I can control. And what I can control, I'm going to do and create good habits because God wants us to have good habits. Because if we don't have good habits, you know what sometimes happens? We get bad habits. And then you're like a Pastor Ed who's trying to clean his room and who's trying to make his bed. But I'll tell you this, and Miss Karen can vouch for me, I've been making my bed all week so that I could come before you because I don't want to tell you something. I know. I was, don't ask me next week. I, I'm good try I, I was proud because I went to test this out. Does this work? And it does. It made me feel good, and then I said, I'm going to go do some more things. I have this feeling of accomplishment, and I'm going to, so it kind of like snowballs, and it gets bigger and bigger, and I'm going to say, what else can I accomplish today? So I want you to give it a try. Um, maybe your bed's not perfect, but I want you to do your best. Can you do your best? All right. Because here's the saying, trust in God for the rest. I will do my best. All right, God wants your best. Now, your best might not be good enough for your teacher. Maybe you only get a C. Maybe you only get a D. But if you're doing your best, God says, I'm okay with that. But it's got to be your best. Don't give me your half best and say, I did your best. You know what your best is, right? All right. So as long as you're doing your best, it's good enough for God. And so God wants our best. He, he knows you can make your bed. He knows Pastor Ed can clean up his room. Okay, so let's work at it and let's see if we can create good habits and be Christians who do good things, okay? So God, we thank you for these children. We thank you for the things that you have blessed us with. Help us to be responsible and create good habits that we can become better people, that we can shine a light that you have given us and that other people will see our good deeds and give glory to you, our Heavenly Father. Lord, please protect these children. Let them know that they are not alone. Let them know that you hear what they have to say and that you know how they feel. And that we are also here to listen to them and to let them know that they are loved and appreciated no matter what is happening in the world. So Lord, again, we ask you to help them to become responsible with good habits, and we look to the Holy Spirit to give us the strength to do that. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now, just to show you how special you are, if you want, we have a special church just for the little kids. So if you want to go to our special church, now's the time to go to Junior Church. We're going to be having a meeting of Bedmakers Anonymous later today where we'll discuss our struggle and how it's a real struggle, but how we can overcome our struggle. Um, now, nah, just uh, again, appreciate uh, you're still um, being in tune with what we're talking about. Um, I think clutter is a spiritual issue. And um, I know some people are like, oh, come on. And, um, and, and you'll see, I think, as we go through it, um, our spiritual self controls our thoughts. And a lot of times our clutter can be spiritual. It can be emotional. And sometimes it plays out in our physical clutter. So I think they're all connected. And that's why we want to treat all aspects of clutter because I think it's they're all related. We're mind, body, and soul. So uh, that's what we're going to continue on our clutter today. Um, and um, 
in review, um, real quick, we talked about um, how stuff is helpful. Okay, we do, we're not looking you to become a monk, um, to, you know, but we know that stuff is helpful. Stuff can make us happy, and there's nothing wrong with that in the sense of as long as it doesn't become between us and God. In that point, that it becomes an idol. And you know with some people that have so much stuff, they, and we'll talk about a guy today um, uh, that becomes, the stuff becomes his idol. It, beca- it replaces God. Um, can our possessions possess us? Okay, so that's a, a nice play on words, but it's a real thing. And um, we talked about that, um, again, as we talked about, it's clutter that is bad. And we define clutter as anything that's unnecessary. Do we have anything unnecessary in our spiritual life? Are we trying to earn God's love by stuff we do? Are we dealing with that we can't ask God for forgiveness for things that we have done and thinking he can't forgive us? Those are certain spiritual clutters that we need to fix because you need to know God loves you. Jesus died for you. There's nothing more that you can do to earn God's love, and there's nothing you can do to have God love you less. And you're like, well, Pastor Ed, you don't know what I've done. And I don't. But God does, and he still loves you. He may be disappointed, but that doesn't mean he doesn't love you. So know that God loves you. And uh, and as we talked about, um, again, that sometimes our physical clutter is a result of mental clutter, and our mental clutter could be a result of some spiritual clutter. Somehow they can be connected, we said. And as we said... um, Too often our clutter can be a distraction from following Jesus. We talked about the the rich young man, and um, Jesus said he he couldn't follow Jesus because his stuff got in the way of following Jesus. Last week we um, discussed the idea of um, we don't want to shame anybody. That's not loving. Um, That's not, I don't even know if it works that well. Um, But we want to love people, and as we love them, and hopefully you're feeling this is a loving series that we want to be better we want to get better habits because um, we learned last week how this can glorify God Um, we looked at some of the causes of clutter and again um, maybe it is lazy um, and there's an answer for that um, but maybe it's also more complicated as we say as things are linked all together in ourself and all the different aspects of ourself we looked at that uh, maybe some of the reasons for clutter is that something has value and we don't want to get rid of it because we paid a lot for it. Um, maybe we have clutter and we don't want to get rid of it because it has sentimental value, an emotional attachment. Um, maybe um, it's because we have this thinking that we might need it later. And that's a valid thought. But what do we keep? And for how long do we keep it? And is it why, you know, you're thinking like, this is wise to keep it. But again, we'll talk about scarcity and hoarding. And it's okay to keep things for that someday, but, you know, at some point, how long do we keep it? Because we said, can we agree, we can't keep everything because eventually we will fill up. And space for most people is limited. And at some point, we want to be a good steward of what God has given us. Remember, he gave one person one talent, one person three talents, one person five talents. And the people with three and five did stuff with what they were given, The one person didn't do anything with it, and Jesus had some harsh words about that person. So we want to be good stewards. Um, Maybe we feel overwhelmed. Um, It's something, again, going on mentally that we don't know how to just even process it. We don't even know where to start because it got too overwhelming. Maybe we don't have enough time. Maybe we don't have enough space, enough room. These are all valid reasons. But here's the good news. There's a spiritual answer for all of those problems. Um, Last week, we talked about one spiritual answer, and that was pruning. Um, The idea of that less can be more. That Jesus talks about that they want to cut off pieces in us that aren't as fruitful, and even the areas that are fruitful, if he cuts some of them, they will be even more fruitful. So we talked about that idea of pruning, and um, as as it, that whole um, abide in me ends, it ended as an act of worship, saying that you would bear much fruit for the glory of God. So it can kind of show us that pruning, that less is more, if you're having trouble, is that that can be your act of worship. And, and I do that a lot. For me, I'm like, is this more important to me than God? And of course it's not. And I'm like, all right, as my act of worship, which is a lot of times you're here to worship God, you are sacrificing your time, 
Um, later, we'll make an offering. You're sacrificing your treasure. When you serve God, you're sacrificing your talent. You're not using it for yourself. You're using it for God. So for me, when I'm decluttering, I'm using the spiritual act of worship to say, God, um, I know I have struggles with this, but I'm going to get rid of this because I want to worship you. I want to show you that you are first in my life. And because of any of those reasons, I can let it go because it is clutter, because I am running out of space. Um, this week... Um, we're going to get into, um, as Marianne uh, gave us a great start there with the call to worship, um, a scripture that I'm uh, guessing you're familiar with. Um, and if not, we're going to read it to you anyway. It's the parable of the rich fool. Now you think like, well, how can a person be rich and be a fool? Well, because a fool and his money are soon, to, that's not from the Bible, okay? But anyway, I think it's a Richard's Almanac. But anyway, um, this is from Luke 12. And as we start Luke 12, um, and we'll get into verses 13, but Luke 12, the beginning of his, Jesus is teaching to thousands of people. He's teaching about being faithful during difficult times. So this is a, a good discussion he's having with thousands of people. And then verse 13 says, Someone in the crowd, a thousand, said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus said, Man! Did you love that? Jesus was cool. Man! They translated that as, man! Who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator between you? Then he said to them, all right, so he's, he's taking this point that this man says. This man says, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. He says, watch out, everyone. Watch out, Jesus is saying to you. Be on the guard. Okay, so we have to be on the guard because this is something that can sneak in. It can be subtle. We don't see it happening. And before you know it, it's there. So be on guard against all kinds of greed. Now, when I say greed, you have a picture of greed. Jesus is going to give us a picture of greed that I wasn't ready for yet. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Don't say it's not true, Jesus. Because that's the life in America. The one with the most toys wins, right? I mean, every day I see an infomercial or something. How did I live my life without this contraption I'm seeing on TV? Rinse and repeat. It's the best thing ever. You need this. And if you act right now, you'll get two of them. And we'll pay free ship, you know what I mean? And, and you won't have no payments till next year. And, and, and I can't get out my credit card fast enough. But Jesus says, life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Now let's just take a pause here because some people are like, well, what's up with Jesus in his statement there? Um, first of all, the this man interrupted Jesus when he's teaching a, a big spiritual principle. So the guy's not interested in what Jesus, he can learn from Jesus. The man's interested in his finances. He's like, God, Jesus, um, yeah, 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 I hear you teaching about faith and all that, but um, I want you to settle something between me and my brother. You know, it'd be like somebody shouting out, hey, Pastor Ed, tell my husband not to leave the socks on the floor. <laughs> now? This ain't the place of the time, man. See what I did there? Man, come on. We're talking about spiritual things here. And uh, maybe there's a spiritual principle to socks on the floor, but not now. All right, so the man's interested in how he can gain financially, not spiritually. And, you know, Jesus said to him, you know, one day Jesus will be his judge. But Jesus is saying, man, right now I'm trying to be your savior. I'm trying to save you so I don't have to be your judge. But if I don't save you, then I will be your judge later. So, man, maybe you should be paying attention to what I'm trying to teach you. But, but being that you brought it up, we're going to go with it. Okay, because Jesus says, I'm going to work with this because uh, this clown um, just jumped up there and everyone's like, all right, so we got this moment. We're going to make the most of this moment because this is a teachable moment. Now, I'm going to need a volunteer. I'm just going to read three verses. And I need a volunteer to count how many times Jesus is going to tell a parable about a man, um, a farmer. 
um, a rich man, or as the parable is known as the rich fool. So I need somebody to count every time, and I'll help you out, but I'm not going to keep the count of when he refers to himself, okay? So here we go in 16, and he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man, okay, so there we go, he's a rich man, yielded an abundant harvest. Now, Jesus used that word just a minute ago. He says, life does not consist of an abundance of possessions. But Jesus did say later, I came to give you an abundant life. Now, where's the difference? Okay. He, okay, verse 7, there's one. He thought to, now let's not count the he. That don't count. But he thought to himself, that's one. All right, he's not talking to God. He's thinking to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Well, you know what we do? We go, and I, this is not in the, um, anything on anybody here, okay? So if this is, could, we go buy a storage unit, and they're cheap, right? They're worth less than the junk I'm putting in it, right? I mean, you do see the irony. I'm paying top dollar for storage. Well, we can, I, I, we'll see that for another time, but okay, so we're up to, what should I do? I have no place to store my crops. Oh, there's, there's a my, my crops, okay, for. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus and grain. And I'll say to myself, you getting the pattern here? This guy's a real... You, have, you, I'm going to say that, that's one. You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. How much is enough? Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Hmm. Because that's what the world does, right? And I'm going to give it to you right now. I mean, we're not, God said to him, you fool. Did God say to him, wow, you're a great businessman. Hey, you're a great farmer. No, he said, you're a fool. Now, it doesn't mean he's not smart. The Bible says a fool is someone who's not concerned with spiritual life. A fool does not believe in God. It's not, it doesn't mean wisdom. It's just a foolish person. Um, it's a wise person who believes in the word of God. You know, there's this def definite, but a fool does not. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then, who will get what you have prepared for yourself? And this is the wrapper-upper. This, he's telling the crowd, is how it will be with whoever stores up things. Ouch. Now again, there's nothing wrong with being a good steward. But how much is enough? This guy had so much, and we'll talk more about it. This is how it will be for whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. There's nothing wrong with that as long as the love of, is not of money or the love is not of greed, which is the love of money. But if you can be rich towards God, he tells us right there. And, and we can talk about how do I be rich towards God. But again, here we have this um, guy. Um, Jesus is talking about being faithful and you know he wants Jesus to intertwine. Um, and um, I don't even know where the count ended up, but it was over 10. Did anybody get more? I mean, I, well, it was what, 12, 13? Yeah, so, so it was over, right, 11, maybe, um, a count of how, how many times he replied to himself. And, um, and somebody could say, and again, we have business people here. Praise God for business people. I want God to bless your business. And I think you're smart enough to know as God blesses you, you bless others. Do we hear about this guy taking care of his employees at all? No. Do we hear, so, so, um, so isn't he just being a good businessman? The problem is not what he does. The problem is why he does it. He's motivated by selfish greed. The man is talking about himself. I, I, I. My, my, my. He's obsessed with numero uno. Um, and God's got a lot to say about that. Who's numero uno in our life? Yeah, I hope so. Um, you know, um, why do we put on our coins... In God we trust. Because we need a reminder that I don't trust in my money. My security is not, money is not bad. Money is good. But greed is bad. 
We don't trust, we don't find our security in money, we find our security in God. Do you see any point of this where he had any gratitude towards God? Now, I know farmers, and I never realized this until I got to know farmers better. Farmer, every farmer I have met, now I'm not saying all farmers are this way, but every farmer I have met had great faith, greater faith than I had. And I was like, wow, these farmers have great faith. And they explained it to me. They said, Pastor Ed, I take a seed. I put it in the dirt. You know, I may water. I may do a few other things with, um, you know, fertilizer. But the rest is out of my control. I have to have faith that something is going to grow. I have to have faith that there's not too much sun. I have to have faith that there's not too much, you know, rain. And, all the, and I know those things happen. But the farmer has faith. And the farmer praises God in general when he has a good crop. Because he knows it, he, some of it was because of him. But he knows he has to trust a lot of that to others. So this farmer doesn't seem like he's grateful to anybody but himself. And a farmer should know better than anybody that what he got was not of his own doing. He did nothing with his blessings that we can tell to bless others. And I think Jesus purposely made the parable that way. Maybe he's guilty, I would say yes, of hoarding, um, keeping an excess. We always want to ask the question of how much is enough? And I think that's a biblical principle. We'll talk more about that. He's indulging himself with himself. His favorite thing. Um, and Jesus says, beware that this is a disease. We need to be on guard against all kinds of greed. And greed is not a good thing. If you really want to take it, uh, and again, just, let's take a little step. Ten commandments. Um, some people would take, um, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. Thou shalt not envy as a form of how God puts greed, if you're willing to go there, into the Ten Commandments. So it's part of the top ten and so we want to be careful of that. Um, but here's the, as we said, the world, the message today. Um, have it your way. Um, buy it now. Easy payments. You deserve this. How did you live without this? Your life would be so better with this. I mean, praise God we have television and radio, and I, I love it. But, you know, the way we get it is that there are commercials, generally speaking. And, and they do marketing to sell us stuff. And I'm okay with that, but they're very good at what they do. Very good. Um, so, you know, it's on sale. You got to buy it. If you buy it, I'll give you one free. It goes on and on, and you're like, I'd be crazy not to buy it. You know? Um, so, as we talked about, it begs the question, how many clothes do I need? And I know for some of you, it's getting real personal. Now, I'm not going to say this next one. I'm not going to say how many shoes do I need or how many purses I need because I know that would be going too far. But we're not going to go there, okay? So we're just going to say, how many clothes do you need? How many books does Pastor Ed need? I have more books than I can read in the rest of my life. Yet, I bought more books yesterday. What's up with that? Oh, God, I'm going to use this for a sermon. So, so I can rationalize another book, but where will I put it? Oh, I will build another bookcase. Wait a minute. That sounds like something I've heard in a parable. And, and again, I know this is silly, but is it? We just went through a pandemic, and the way we reacted in the first stages of a pandemic was to buy toilet paper to the point we couldn't. And I get it, because now you're like, and this is the problem with panic. This is the problem with hoarding. All of a sudden, you're saying like, well, Pastor Ed, I'll need some. But that's the problem. If you buy more than you need, then somebody else isn't going to have it. If everyone, and that's what eventually they said, hey, you can only buy one packet of toilet paper because maybe, heaven forbid, somebody else will need it. And then eventually things worked out. But people were buying, the way our biggest fear was, I wouldn't have enough toilet paper. And I don't want to go any further with those thoughts. But Lord have mercy. 
Um, so our greed, and this guy also has arrogance in a sense, which is a double, you know, he felt his possessions gave him security. And maybe we're guilty of that too. How many of us, I mean, there's nothing wrong. You should have a 401k or retirement, but that is wise. But too often, as we also learn with the pandemic, do we put our trust, even though it's on our coins, in our money, in our retirement fund, or in our stuff? How, how many times do we put our security in our job? Well, how did that work out for some of us? I, I, I put my security in my health. Well, how did that work out for some of us? Where do we need to put our security? Yes. Um, so, again, God calls him a fool. He says, you're a fool. You made all these plans, but you made no plan for eternity. Um, it says in another part of the Bible, you can gain the whole world, but what does it profit you if you lose your soul? Your soul is for eternity. Everything that he's talking about here is temporary. The possessions, you can't take them with you. But what about your soul? You are a fool. We all know, need to know that there is um, a time of eternity for all of us. And I think that's how we live, in the light of eternity. There's an eternal hell, and there's an eternal heaven. And you get to choose, because of Jesus Christ, of what your choice would be. Don't be a fool. Jesus concludes it a little farther down. Um, this is how it will be. Whoever stores up things for themselves, but it is not rich towards God. And that's a neat concept. Rich towards God. Are we putting God first in our life? Are we following the example of being generous as we are blessed? Let's bless others. Or are we being selfish? Are we keeping things for ourselves? It means instead of I, it means God. First seek the kingdom of God and all that righteousness. And then everything else will be given unto you. We see in another part of the Bible. Um, the Bible always talks about giving. And um, that's the way we want to be. Um, really interesting, I thought it was, the way it ends is, um, and again, I, I just want to make this clear. Money is important, okay? So I'm not saying money is not important. And we need to be responsible. Again, we'll, next week I think we'll talk more about being a good steward, a good manager of what God has given us. Because um, so we want to be responsible, but we, and we do need money to live, okay? This church doesn't exist without money. Um, but the thing is, what's the most important thing? Is money and stuff what we live for, or do we live for God? Um, do our possessions possess us, or does God possess us? Um, here's the really interesting thing that I, I saw in the commentary. The man came to him and interrupted Jesus, wanting to know about his earthly inheritance. And let's, Jesus called him a fool, because Jesus was trying to tell him about his eternal inheritance. And that's, Jesus wants to give us joy. Jesus wants to give us the abundant life. It comes first through him, not through stuff. So as we try to work through the spiritual, mental, and physical clutter of our life, things that aren't necessary, Let's make sure we know what is necessary. Jesus is the, what we should be seeking. Jesus is the answer to everything. So uh, with that, uh, Lord, we thank you for this parable. We come before you humbled and we want to be rich towards you. We don't want to be greedy. We want to be generous like you. Please forgive us if we have slipped in this area and that there are all kinds of forms of greed, as you have shown us, even an abundance of possessions. So, Lord, we come to you and we ask for the Holy Spirit to give us the fruits of the Spirit, joy, that we don't have to buy things to have joy. Um, give us self-control so that we can control and be wise in the things that you have given us. And give us the joy of sharing with others as you have shown us. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. We'd like to go uh, into our prayer hymn. Um, now, uh, on Wednesdays, we meet for an hour of prayer. Um, and um, 
There's a song called the Sweet Hour Prayer, and um, if our prayer takes an hour, then so be it. Um, I don't think it will, so don't uh, freak out. Um, but uh, let's stand and sing hymn number 496, the Sweet Hour of Prayer. This is the time in our service where we have an opportunity to share with one another any prayer concerns that we might have. Um, Jack has the mic, so he'll bring the mic to you so that the people at home can hear your concern and pray for them as well. I had asked for prayers a few weeks ago for a coworker who uh, lost her job unexpectedly. I'm happy to say that she has found another job and Amen. is going through her orientation this week. Um, please keep Sienna in your prayers uh, for this Wednesday. She has, a, it's a minor surgery, but uh, to repair a hernia. And then also um, on Thursday, the next day, James will be leaving for Africa for two weeks. So just ask um, blessings on him for safe travel and also um, blessings over his reunions with family, whom he has not seen in a very long time. Uh, we'd like prayer for uh, Chuck and I. We're leaving on a trip to Florida, and we're driving, so we would like safe travels. 
I'd also like to thank everybody for the prayers they've been sending up for my husband, Butch. He goes for his second um, eye surgery this Thursday, this coming Thursday. Um, the other eye that he could see from all of a sudden is kind of fading again. They don't know why. I guess they figure it's just advanced that far as far as the degenerated degeneration. Um, but they really feel he'll be okay with the other eye at this point. And uh, we just need prayer that, that uh, everything goes well and he stays calm and um, God is so good. I just thank him for what we did come through. Well, um, Jack is walking around. Please uh, continue to pray for Sharon's brother, Richard. Um, he's not doing as well as they had expected during rehab, so um, prayers for him and prayers for decisions for Sharon as she makes decision on, decisions on his behalf. Mary and I have three, one for Kathy's dad. We're bringing him home from the rehab facility this week, and he's moving into a small room, so we're not sure how he will adjust to that because we're not gonna be able to fit all the furniture in there, so we're not sure exactly how he's going to take to going into a small or different room. Uh, secondly, for Kathy's brother who's fighting ALS, and then third for a member of my lodge who is up in Lehigh Valley Hospital, and he had lost his wife last fall, and he's having some very difficult health problems right now. I'm sorry, who was that? A uh, man is named Dick. He is having some serious health problems. He had lost his wife uh, last fall. Okay. Any others? I just want to put out a uh, prayer request for my uh, brother-in-law, uh, Mike, as he's going through some very difficult and trying times right now. Um, that's about the extent of what I could say, just that, uh, and that uh, the decisions that uh, me and Sonny have to make will be clear. Uh, praise that Sam is doing fine, and I thank you all for your prayers. There's more tests to come. Um, he was more scared, I think, than anything else, but he's good, and I thank you all. So just, just a P.S. Um, also, while James is away, I neglected to ask for prayer also for Danielle and the girls because they're sure. nervous about Daddy being so far away, um, and also for all of us who will be helping to support all the their busy, busy life <laughs> with him gone. So um, I know you didn't want to use the mic, but then the people at home can't hear you. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so Brian was asking for prayers for Armenia. They've been going through a lot, and slowly, um, others are kind of erasing some of the history that they've been experiencing and causing them obvious pain. And um, so prayers for them as they're suffering. Anybody else? All right, let us go before the Lord. Lord God, we thank you that we know that you are present with us and that you know not only our hearts, but you have heard the concerns that have been lifted up this morning. And Lord, we also know that the prayers on some of our hearts could not be lifted up um, vocally, 
but we lift them before you now knowing that you hear them and care for them as well. Lord, we praise you that Anime's um, co-worker has found a job and we just pray a blessing over this job for her and may it be um, something that she can feel satisfied with and um, just help her to see that you are continuing to be with her um, as she starts this new job. And Lord, we lift up Sienna to, to you who will be having surgery uh, um, this week and we just ask that you would be um, with her and especially her parents. Um, make the surgery go smoothly, Lord, and help her to recover quickly from the hernia operation. And we lift up James to you who will be um, <clears throat> traveling to Africa with his uncle and we just ask safety for them both as they travel but also let it be a blessed time as he comes um, to meet with relatives that he hasn't seen in a long time, Lord. Um, just be with them both as they uh, travel around there and um, just help them to know that you are with them through all of this. And we do lift up Danielle and the girls to you <clears throat> as they um, will be having James away for <clears throat> those two weeks and we just ask that you would surround them, help them to know that you are with them and um, keep them safe and keep everything running smoothly, Lord, while James is away. Lord, we also lift up safety for Carol and Chuck as they travel to Florida. Um, they will be driving, Lord, so keep them safe um, as they travel back and forth and let them too have a, a blessed time uh, being away and just keep, their, keep them protected, Lord. Lord, we lift up Butch to you. We'll be having a second eye surgery and we ask that that would go well and um, that it would continue to provide the sight that he needs in that eye, Lord. And we just ask that you would continue to um, heal his other eye when he had the surgery on. Lord, uh, don't make it any worse. Continue to make it better. We just ask that you would be with him and help him to trust that you are in all of this as well. And we thank you that Kathy's father is coming home from rehab, but we ask that you would surround him as he um, moves into a smaller room. Lord, help him to see that this is for his good and just help him to feel your presence in the midst of all these changes that he is going through. And we lift up Kathy's brother to you um, and we just ask that you would continue to provide healing for him as well. Um, help him to know that you are there and help him to see you in the midst of this and, and give the doctor's wisdom for the best treatment for him as well. And we um, also lift up Dick to you and um, we don't know what his health issues are, Lord, but you do and we ask your healing upon him and also provide him comfort for the loss of his wife recently. Um, surround him, Lord, and help him to feel your peace and comfort during this time. We also lift up Mike to you, and um, Lord, we know he's a believer, and we just are trusting that you can speak to him and give him the wisdom that he needs in the times that he's struggling with right now and help him to sense your presence and peace in that situation. And also surround um, Joey and Sonny <clears throat> and give them discernment and decisions that they need to make as well, Lord. Help them to just, all of them, to hear from you clearly. They want to do what you desire for them to do, and so speak to their hearts. Lord, we praise you that um, Sam is doing better. Um, it must have been quite the scare for what he went through, and so we just help um, Sam to um, just be calm through all of this, and, and, and we just pray for his parents that they might have the direction that they need for what will be best for him. And we are trusting that this was just something that was unique, Lord. Help them to not find anything serious as they have more tests taken and help um, his parents to just know what to do um, in this situation if they have to make any decisions regarding his care. And Lord, we do lift up both the, the um, countries of Ukraine and Armenia, Lord, 
Anytime we hear that people are suffering, um, it breaks our heart. And so we just pray that you would surround them, that they would feel your peace, and, and that others would continue um, to take up their cause for them, to help them get through this and, and fight against what is happening um, in both those countries. And Lord, we also lift up Sharon's brother to you, Richard, and we just ask that you would continue, continue his healing process as he's been struggling um, to get through the rehab. And we know he's anxious to get home, Lord, and we just pray that you would give him the strength that he needs to get through this time and also help Sharon to know that you are there with her as she makes decisions on his behalf, help her to be at peace with those decisions and the best thing that would be um, care for him. So Lord, just surround that whole situation. Lord, we also lift up the leadership of Tabor Church and ask that you would continue to guide us so that we can be doing the work that you desire us to do. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward for the morning offering? <clears throat> Lord God, we thank you for being our great provider. We have seen you provide for us personally in so many ways, and we have seen your, you providing for our church. For all that you have done, we now give back to you. Receive and bless what has been given and our gifts of service. May they be used to show others your desire for them to come to know you. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. If you would like um, prayer, personal prayer, there will be a prayer team over to my right.
I'd be glad to pray for you. And our closing hymn is number 382, Have Thine Own Way. I think um, singing the words of that song is, is really, a, it's also a great prayer. And so I think it all fits in with what Pastor Al, Pastor, sorry, Ed. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> what Pastor Ed was sharing with us this morning. Uh, I know I've lost my complete train of thought. Anyway. Uh, just trust um, that God, when he says, when we say to him, have thine own way, Lord, that he has what's best for each one of us. And in response to that, we don't need all that stuff. We just keep on trusting him through it all. Let's pray. Lord God, we sang the words, have thine own way. And hopefully we all meant what we sang that it wasn't just words that we were singing, but we do, do desire to live our life so that you are the center of it all, that you would be in our life more fully so that we can be following you and know exactly what we are to be doing. But most of all, Lord, that we can trust you, that you have what is best for each one of us. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week. <laughs>